Hello, Vesley here, and we're going to be using FE Builder today and just trying to make whatever we can in about 10 minutes time. So to start, I like to just skip all of the opening stuff for once we can do testing and all of that. So I just like to use these three patches if you type in skip opening. Um, next, we're actually going to go into FE Map Creator which is a separate program, and it's just to generate a map for us. I'm going to make it 18 width and 19 height. Let's press Generate Map, Control N. That one has too many mountains, I'd say, so I'll just uh, make a new one, and then I'll just repair it. I can hold Control R, and it eventually comes up with something that seems to work pretty well. Um, so now that I've done that, I'm back in my hack directory. I'm going to save it as a tiled file. And let's just call it our test map. So that can be our opening chapter map. Now that we've done that, let's go back into FE Builder. We're in, using the map editor right now. And we're going to import that map. So you see I pressed import. And I clicked on our test.tmx. And so it's up here for us to use. Now we hit right to ROM. So now you can see our characters are over here um, on the map, as we would expect. Now, I don't really want to use the same characters as vanilla um, Fire Emblem 8. So let's go get some characters. So I'm looking here at the Ultimate Graphics repository, and I've gone into the Mugging Blitz round 7. And let's just pick a couple of characters. Sure, let's get this one. And another one. It doesn't really matter too much. OK, I have three characters that I pulled out. I'm just going to replace some. And now let's go back into FE Builder, and we're going to replace the portraits. So I'm under the character editor right now, and I've clicked on the character's portrait. You can see over here. And let's just import it with our new characters. Um, so this can be our protagonist. Now FE Builder was saying, well, it's not quite sure about which color is the transparent color, because it wasn't ordered in the way that it expected we can see that this green on the back is transparent. So I just click on that. Now you see the eyes are a little bit um, not quite aligned, it looks like. So I just adjust the X value of one of them, and now she, closes, she blinks her eyes properly. Um, now for Seth, we can use this cool looking dude. And then finally, Let's also change the enemy. It was, normally it's O'Neill. So you see, I can just double click on a character and then it will bring up the unit placer. I could also, up here for each chapter, click on the unit placer, it's the same thing. So now that I found where O'Neill is, he's way over here at 68 in the character ed editor. Let's click on his portrait. And we'll also replace him. It says it's just over 16 colors, so it's just going to fix that for you. And then the mouth looks like it needs to be moved over. So I've moved that over, and we're good to go. And then once we refresh it, we can see O'Neill now looks a bit different. We could also rename them. So you see I double-clicked on the name, and let's just type in Bob. So that can be our enemy. Now, FE Builder is saying that to edit text, we need to install this patch. So I'm saying, yes, go ahead. OK, next, we could also rename our other characters if we feel like it. Jess and Andrew. You know, it gives us a little bit of distinction. 
You can change where they're going to walk if you look at the bottom here. Um, I'll just give him one coordinate and maybe I'll have the enemy start up here because he decided to destroy the village. I can't be bothered with having them have multiple coordinates. Oops. Okay. Selected a space for them to go. Now we have three enemies, um, just like usual. Maybe we'll change their classes as well. So we have the brigand as the leader. Maybe they have a thief who is also going to need a different weapon. So normally he has the, the brigand was using a, an iron axe. We'll give them an iron sword instead. So you see I can double click on that. And then since I've just last used the unit placer, if I double click on the sword, it lets me go back and forth. Uh, we don't really need to worry too much about AI right now, but that's one of the enemies. And then player placement, I don't need all of this happening. Maybe we'll start down here. And because it has a whole bunch of scripted events at the start of Fire Emblem 8, so I'm not really worrying about that. I just want a place for our party to start at. So that looks fine. Now there aren't too many enemies. Now we can change that if we want. Now there are some events that normally occur in Fire Emblem 8. Let's just change it to one event that occurs. And sure, we'll make a new event. So I've put it in, there's no event here. And we're gonna press new event. And let's do player or NPC reinforcement. And then we need to select a unit to join our party. So let's, we're back in the unit placer now. We're gonna allocate just one new unit. Let's make it, we could have Gilliam or we could have whoever we want, we want really. Sure, let's have Joshua. Now I haven't given Joshua anything in particular. He can have a killing edge, I guess. And where should he stand? Let's give him a level so he's not level zero, because level zero just looks weird. So now on some turn, he can join the party. There we go. Now, what turn should I have this occur on? Right now it's on the first enemy turn. Maybe we'll have it on turn two. That looks fine. You know, maybe he should also say something. So let's put in a conversation event. This is one I often go to. And then instead of displaying Zonta, we need the correct character to appear. And where was he? Joshua. My lucky day, sure. Now we have a conversation event. So yes, I have just overwritten um, the previous, do you think you can truly take us with those numbers um, event or, or conversation, uh, that's fine. Next, we can look at different types of events. Now you see map objects, like if there were a village to visit or something like that, we would add an event there. There are no villages in this right now. However, there is this event that occurs. It's just to check the number of enemies and then for Seth to say, 
all that's left is their leader. So we don't really need this event. I can just delete it, its contents, except for the event end. That's fine. And finally, let's go over to our start event. We don't need most of these things going on. So we have our load unit. That's our important part. We could have a conversation if we want, but I don't have time for that right now. I need to find where the enemies are loaded. Here they are. So they seem to be loaded um, within that event. So I opened it up, but now that I've copied it to over here, I don't really need it anymore. So here's our very bare bones event. Then our end event, it's really just go to the, to the next chapter. So we're not too worried about that right now. Um, I think I need to give Jess, our Lord, some sort of item. Maybe I'll change their class. We could have, she could be a Myrmidon and give her some sort of sword, poison sword, sure. And maybe he'll be a sniper. Now snipers can't use steel swords. Let's give him a silver bow and a steel bow. That looks fine. Okay, and now that we've made a very, very bare bones chapter, let's go ahead and try it out and see what happens. Now, you can see that uh, FE Builder has this excellent connect to emulator feature, so it kind of shows you what's going on as well. Let's go ahead and start a new game. Now, I didn't rename the uh, chapter title name, but that's okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, I've started the chapter. Um, I have different characters. There's the enemies. There's not too, too much to do right here. Um, oh, I forgot to... I guess she can't use her sword, which is kind of a problem. And indeed, I never set the weapon experience correctly. So snipers, by default, they can use um, sea bows, but not the silver bow that I gave to Andrew. Um, so it looks like I just have to try and win with her steel bow user, at least. Ha! Scoundrels! My lucky day! I'm not really sure why they're saying that, but, you know, it's just something. Now let's try the Killing Edge. Joshua did pretty well. And, of course, we go to the um, victory theme, because there's only one enemy left alive. And let's defeat the boss. Might take a couple hits. I never got rid of his battle quote, so it's still just... You'll be the first to die. Um, it looks like he doesn't want to move. Um, I think his AI might be set to the boss AI, which is do not move. But that's fine. And we completed my very <laughs> bare bones chapter. Now, I never edited any of this, so it's just the characters that you would usually expect. Anyway, this has been Vesley. I hope this has been a cool introduction to just using Effie Builder for a few minutes and seeing what it's like. Cheers.